Hey guys, Marshall here with PhysioU. I'm here with Kristen, and for the Mentoring Minute today, we're gonna go over exercises for rotator cuff repair. Um, and a systematic review came out in 2017, looking at 20 different articles. They started with 2,000 and narrowed it down to 20, and looked at all the different exercises um, that used EMG to look at how much infraspinatus and supraspinatus activity went on. They looked at over 43 exercises, and nine met the criteria, that had less than 15% of MVIC for the supraspinatus and infraspinatus. So we're gonna go over those nine exercises today. That, and again, they're all passive or active assisted at very low levels of infraspinatus and supraspinatus. And why are we doing that? Because there's a high retear rate in these rotator cuff repair patients, especially if they have other comorbidities, the size of the tear. So how do we limit those retears, but also make sure they get back to their mobility in these early stages? So the first one would be either supine, standing, um, or sitting, passive, external rotation using a stick. So again, right arm's going to external rotation, being pushed by the left arm. The next one is wall-assisted external rotation. So patient's facing the wall, arms on the corner, and then slowly they're gonna turn their body away, letting their shoulder be pulled into external rotation. Again, be careful if they had an infraspinatus repair, as this does stretch the infraspinatus. The next one would be the supine press-up. So go ahead and push up. Use your left arm to push, your right arm's just going along for the ride. Again, press up. Trying to stay below a 90 degree angle. So you're getting gentle range of motion in the flexion. And relax. Instead of a stick, this can also be done with a washcloth. Starting with hands together for more stability. Again, you're trying to lift up and then progressed to hands apart. Again, all of these exercises had less than 15% MVIC of infra and supraspinatus. And down. Good. Next would be towel slides in the seated position. Again, the motion comes more from the patient's body. It can be done in flexion, as well as turning her body 45 degrees to now be done in scaption. Okay. Next is pendulums, where the patient either rests her body on her hand or on her forearm, depending how well she's able to let the arm relax. Okay. A couple of studies looked at different sizes of pendulums. The one that met the criteria was small pendulums with the arm relaxed coming from the body. It showed that large pendulums, or if this is done incorrectly, where the shoulder stiffens up, actually had too much activity in the supraspinatus or infraspinatus. So keep the motions fairly small and make it come more from the body than from the shoulder. The last exercise is prone scap retractions with the arm staying on the table. So again, not necessarily a range of motion exercise, but what the research shows is that it's safe to do this without getting increased activation of your rotator cuff muscles. So still fairly passive or active assisted, but really you're working on more scapular control. What was interesting about that article is a very commonly given exercise would be um, using pulleys, which had higher level activities than the criteria. So they did not meet the criteria. So maybe what we want to do is try to stay away from pulleys in the early phases and use more of some of the body on the table or the stick um, for these so acute rotator cuff repairs. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about exercises for rotator cuff repair. Make sure you stop by our app, PhysioU, um, and let us know what you think. Take care.